live. Okay, it is 9-16, September 16th, 9-16-19. Okay, so you can do it on Desmos or you can do it on a calculator. Um, I'll probably do it on Desmos because Desmos is easier to see, right? So first of all, let's go ahead and graph it. Y equals... So if I've got y equals x squared, and I'm going to go subtract 4. We should know what look, that looks like. Okay, there it is. It's a parabola, right? So I'm going to go ahead and try and graph that in. I'm going to go down to 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And y-intercept to negative 4. I also know it goes through at... 2 and through at negative 2 and so my graph is going to look like that okay what's the minimum value zero, it is 0 negative 4 so the minimum value is at 0 negative 4 okay and behavior and behavior okay as x goes to infinity y goes to pause infinity as x goes as x as x goes to negative infinity that way y goes to Pause infinity. Okay, it is a polynomial, degree two. Autumn. What? Autumn's thinking. I like that. Oh, like what? It's Autumn's thinking. It's always good when Autumn's thinking. She always has great questions. Okay, I'm gonna slide it to number two. Okay, number two. So sketch this graph. Let's see what my calculus says. It's gonna look like. All right. <laughs> So I'm going to go x, back it up, cubed, and then subtract 9x. Okay, it looks like that. Seems to go through at 3 and negative 3 and 0. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So the graph looks something like, and, and you don't have to have all, I just want the shape of it. Does that make sense? That's all I care about. I don't need to know everything exact. I just need the general shape. And that's a cubed. That's a cubic function. It is an odd function, okay? It's called an odd function. First one is an even function. Okay, this is definitely an odd function, okay? What's the minimum and maximum values? Well, the cool part about Desmos, ha, you can tap on it, okay? I like Desmos. So there's my maximum you don't have to do anything fancy, you just tap on it. So my max is about negative 1.732. So it's about a negative 1.732 comma a 10.392. That's my maximum. Maximum is like the top of a hill, just the top of a hill. Because there is a bigger max. There is a bigger max, because this goes up to infinity, right? Well, when you talk about a local max, you're talking about the top of a hill, okay? Because, yeah, it goes off to infinity, but that's my max, and then that's going to be my min, okay? And again, the cool part about decimals, I can just tap on it. So if I go to my calculator, I want it, then the minimum, I just tap on it. There it is. I got a negative, or a positive one point, positive 1.732, comma, negative 10.392, Okay. Pretty easy, especially at Desmos. Max, min. Okay, turn the page. Sketch this graph. All right, I can do that. Back that up. Plan all that is cubed. that. Okay, it doesn't really have a max or a min, but it's got a bendy point. You see it? And that bendy point is called an inflection point. Okay, 
it's not really called a bendy point, that doesn't sound like math, but an x cubed equation looks like this. And it's going to have this little bendy, and that bendy point is called an inflection point. Yeah, thank you. And the inflection point is that point right there. And it's at the value 0, 0, okay? So this, the inflection point is at the point 0, 0, okay? It's a business term. And it's where business changes things. For instance, business is starting to slow down, right? Things are starting to slow down. We're not making as much money. And then all of a sudden, we hire a brand new president. Oh. Alex comes in, changes everything. We start to make money again, right? We make change. So you would be... You'd be the inflection point. All of a sudden, we go from, oh, it looks dismal, to we hire a new CEO. Things take off again, right? You're fired. There you go. Okay, four. Let's take a look at what four looks like. Okay, again, I'm going to put on my Desmos. And... Wait, so with any number, you have to have the same thing inflection You have... Here is your inflection point on this one. Because you're going from going down, down, down. Then start to change. It starts to change here, Autumn. It starts to kind of slowly stop being so bad and then it picks up steam again. That's an inflection point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Great question. I can show you some later, okay? Um, you're asking really good questions. Let me go ahead and put this in. I'll show you later, okay? Because you're asking calculus stuff, which I like is awesome. Okay, x to the fourth, right? To the fourth. And then subtract 3x squared. Uh, subtract 5. Let's see what this one looks like, okay? Go ahead and go like that. Okay, there. Looks like a big W. You guys see it? Looks like a W. Uh, looks like a W. Seems like it goes through to about 1 and negative 1. Nope, that's not true. That That's 10, 2, 4, 6, 8. Yeah, it goes through 2. It goes through 2 and negative 2. So it's like a big W. No, hold on, wrong color. Get it this way. And again, we just want the shape. I'm not really concerned about, you know, the values. I just want the basic shape, okay? So it kind of goes like this. Back up like that, okay? So minimum and maximum values, okay? That's easy. I know that this is at 0, negative 5. Ooh, how did I get that number so quick? 0, negative 5. How did I know that was 0? 0, negative 5. How did I know that? Minus 5. Minus 5, right? If x is 0, minus 5. There you go. And these um, here, I don't know these, but I can tap on my calculator, right? I can tap on Desmos. And I can get that. Okay, let's see. Tap. And I got it about negative 1. Negative 1.2 comma negative 7.25. And my guess is this is going to be the opposite. Positive 1.2 comma a negative 7.25. Okay, there's my max and my mins, okay? And let's do the last one. Let's do number 5 and we'll be done. So again, I'm going to use my calculator to do number 5. Am I going too fast? Can you need me to slow down for a second? Okay, we're good. Okay, number 5, I'm going to go x to the 5th. Oops, back up to the fifth and subtract three, subtract three x cubed and then plus two. Let's see what that one looks like. Ooh, that one's got a weird little thing. And then autumn, there's my inflection point. Can you see it right there? Isn't that cool? Yeah. So it's going to look something like this. Again, it does not have to be perfect. I just want the general shape. So it goes up like this. It starts coming down. It's got a little bendy right about here. A little bendy, which is my inflection point, right? It goes back down and then up, okay? And there's my inflection point. And I've got my max, my min, and my inflection point. And behavior as x goes to infinity y goes to infinity, right? And then as x goes to negative infinity, y is also going to go to negative infinity, okay? How's that? Okay? And again, real quick, I want to make sure that whoever did not see the lesson understands that polynomials, go back to my book, 
polynomials have whole number exponents, right? And you have to write them in order, and the degree is the biggest exponent. I'll write that down. Okay, I'm going to write that down. I'll quit. So we know that polynomials, polynomials, can you guys see that? Polynomials, whole number, whole number exponents. Okay, just to review for those people who want to watch the film, right? We have to put them in order, okay, descending order. And the degree is the biggest exponent. The degree is the biggest exponent. And the degree changes the shape, right? Every time you make it a different degree, it changes the shape. You guys agree with that? Whether it's an x to the fourth, x to the fifth, and that's why the degree is important. Every time I make it a certain degree, the graph changes, right? It goes from one of these to one of these, right? Time to change the degree. Okay, and that's all I have. So, any questions?